Welcome to the Skies Over Colorado for September 2021. This is Staff Astronomer John Innsworth of the Cherrywood Observatory, volunteer at the Little Thompson Observatory for Longmont Public Media. Starting out with astronomy news as we do every time with another follow-up story and a good one at that. Perseverance looks like it had a success this time. We talked about last month that the first attempt to gather a sample for much later return to Earth uh, had failed. Uh, the Martian material turned out to be way too crumbly and they altered the methodology just a bit, tried it almost a month later, and it seems that they have gotten some material now safely stored away. There's been a discovery of a record old cool brown dwarf. Uh, there's the name of it up on top. That's way too long to read out, but it is nicknamed the accident. Uh, brown dwarf is a failed star. It's not quite big enough to sustain nuclear fusion in its core. And the picture on the right uh, shows the motion of the object against much more distant uh, light sources. Citizen scientist Dan Kasdel, Kasdelden, trying to do that one on the fly, um, I was working with NASA's Backyard Worlds Plant 9 project. This is an unusually cool brown dwarf and that cool down period, the heat that it does have comes from its formation. It would have to be 10 to 13 billion years old, almost as old as the universe itself, to have cooled to this temperature. So the big question is, what's it made of? Brown dwarves we have observed so far have a lot of methane, but that didn't exist in the early universe in any great amount yet. So we are now conducting investigations to see if it has a shocking lack of methane or if it has methane and that needs to be explained. We have a study showing that stars do indeed eat planets and it may happen at a rate greater than we originally imagined. So Lorenzo Spina uh, of Italy and working with the Monash University a team in Australia looked at pairs of sun-like stars. If the stars form together and create a binary star system. They're going to be made of the same materials, so they should have the same elemental makeup. But they have found out of 107 stellar pairs, a third of them, 33, one star had too much iron and lithium, which could be evidence that that star had consumed a planet or two. So they'll have to expand this further and look around the universe for more evidence of this to see uh, how common that might be. All right, back to big star parties. Yes, we have the Delta variant of the coronavirus uh, altering things in the world a little bit, but star parties are held outside and people can get a vaccination. So it seems that that reasoning is keeping a lot of these star parties up and going, with the exception of Michigan, which is canceled. And then the astronomy at the beach has gone purely virtual. The others, best I could tell from their websites, are still scheduled. Do you want to highlight in October, in addition to eight other star parties that are coming, the very close and very fantastic Okitech star party in Kenton, Oklahoma, is still on for October 1 through 9. I think that's longer than I've seen them do that in the past. I'd have to look into that, but uh, maybe they're making it for last year. Your Astro 101 fact or item for this month are noctilucent clouds. These are most often seen just north of Colorado from 50 to 70 degrees north and also south latitudes and they are best seen during the summer months when the sun is just skimming below the horizon uh, past the north point in the earth. And these are ice crystals occurring in a layer of the atmosphere called the mesosphere. And this is 250 to 280,000 feet up, much higher than commercial jets, much higher than thunderstorms ever, ever go. And they kind of look like that gauzy, wavy, 
And what's happening is where our low clouds would be in the nighttime shadow of the Earth, sorry, too touchy on the button there, the sun's illumination uh, is still going past the Earth up above in the upper atmosphere where these clouds are, and so they can pick up the light and you see it as the observer off in the distance. All right, let's check in on the planets and the moon for this month. We start the month with a new moon. If you remember last year, we were ending the month with the full moon that occurred on Halloween in 2020. But its phase period is about 26 days. And so it slips slowly back to the calendar over time. So we have the full moon now on the 21st, which is just about uh, it's about within a day of the beginning of autumn and we end the month near third quarter so we've come back around to the side of the solar system where a lot of planets are so we have venus struggling to get away from the sun it's not quite gaining altitude much last month to this month but it gained a little bit so it's now sitting about two hours after sunset it's the bright thing in the southwestern sky after sunset. The moon, Mars is too close to see, so forget Mars for now. But just after sunset, Jupiter and Saturn are clearly visible high in the eastern sky. Saturn rises at 5, Jupiter at 6, and then Neptune comes up to join them at 7, right about sunset itself. So taking a look, I've kind of expanded some of the graphics here, see if you think that looks better than previous months, but there's Venus. Saturn, Jupiter, and Neptune across the evening sky. So on either side of midnight, Jupiter and Saturn are still up, but they're down in the western sky. Neptune is now approaching the meridian at midnight, and Uranus has risen at about 9 p.m. and is about halfway up in the eastern sky. So here's Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, and Uranus. This is the meridian, the line connecting north and south in the sky. In the morning sky, Neptune is now very low in the southwestern horizon. The other two planets are gone. Uranus is now west of the meridian. It's in the western sky as well. But Mercury is too close to the sun, so the morning sky is kind of boring now. Here's Neptune and Uranus, and nothing in the pre-dawn sky planet-wise. For the sun, sunrise is roughly 6.30 in the morning at the beginning of the month and then at 7 a.m. at the end of the month. I head out on my commute at about 6.45, head east for a while, so later in the month I won't have to uh, worry about putting the sun visor down. That'll be nice. The sunset goes from 7.30 at night back to 6.45-ish. The length of the day is about 13 hours to just under 12 hours at the end with the roughly 12 hour length day occurring on the 22nd or near there. The sun loses 10 degrees of altitude in the southern sky. So September 22nd is the optimal equinox. So fall begins on that Wednesday at officially 1.20 p.m. Your feature object for this month Picking a star called Fomalo. I, having learned all this from books, a lot of it as a child, uh, called it Fomalhaut, which isn't even correct for how it's spelled in English. So Fomalo is correct. It's a brightest star in the southern fish, Pisces Austrianus. It's 1.16 magnitude. And it's the 18th brightest star. Only 25 light years away, very similar to Vega. It has a disk of material around it that we've observed in a number of different uh, space telescopes. And a planet that's just under three times Jupiter's size. The translation of Fomalo is Mouth of the Fish, which that is good because it's a fish constellation, but many call it the Lonely Star or the Loneliest Star. And so here's our evening um, sky, or midnight sky again, with Jupiter and Saturn over here in the western part of the sky and down here without anything around it close to this brightness except the planets is Fomalo. So 
Jupiter Saturn and Pomelo kind of make a uh, isosceles triangle in the light evening midnight sky. Your Colorado observing challenge isn't as challenging as some of the ones I've given you. Uh, that is to observe Earth shine, which is also known as the old moon and the young moon's arms. This month it is best seen right around September 10th, 11th. You can try to see it on the 9th, and it's challenging. It's not, not much moon, and it's really close to the sun. If you look low in the southwestern sky, a sunset sets in, and you see a little sliver of light on the just past new moon moon. And you see this darkened face of the moon facing us. Now the same part of the moon faces us all the time, basically, and the backside always faces away. So right now the backside of the moon is almost fully illuminated, and this side of the moon facing Earth is on the nighttime side. And an interesting bit of geometry, if you think about it, the phase on the Earth that the moon people would see is exactly the opposite uh, the phase that you see in the sky because we are giving them the view of what the backside of the moon right now looks like. So we are a nearly full earth. A nearly full earth reflects a lot of light, about 30, more than 30% of the sunlight. The moon only reflects about 7% of the sunlight that hits it. So we're much bigger than the moon, much brighter, shinier than the moon. So all that earth shine is illuminating the nighttime side of the moon and you can see features on the moon in earth light so the sunlights come from the sun to the earth bounced off the earth bounced off the moon and came to your eyes kind of fun All right astronomy events let's take a look what the clubs are doing now <clears throat> so we have the longmont astronomical society and september 16th at about 7 p.m uh, they do invite you to come in at 6 30 if you just want to chat with people first is Dr. Dan Dura, the Southwest Research Institute's suborbital research initiative first flights in next gen and they were in person I think in Lyons last month and they switched back to being only on Zoom. Longmont Astronomical Society also has uh, their outside uh, star party night September 10th and that is still happening. You do need to go and register, and at that time they'll tell you where to meet everyone. The Little Thompson Observatory is closed through December 31st. Uh, there could be virtual visits. Just check the website and see if anything there is available. This is Park Memorial Observatory. Uh, still having limited groups under 12, and they ask that if you're be, be vaccinated, if not wear a mask. Northern Colorado Astronomical Society has an in-person speaker at Soldier Canyon Group Picnic Area, so the talk will be outside at Laurie State Park. So it'll be Dr. Gregory Wirth talking about Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. September 2nd at 6.15 p.m. The Fisk Planetarium is reopened August 1st, has reduced capacity, a whole bunch of COVID restrictions on their website, please go check that out before going there or making a reservation. And the same with the uh, telescope, it will be coming soon, check their site. I think we've come to the end of my desktop software recommendations. We'll finish with an old one that I use almost every week. Um, it's called Moonrise by Bruce Seidel. And it looks like this little website and the way to pay for this is no longer available. Uh, it was last updated, I think, in 2012. But it's a, just a great little uh, program that can sit in your tray. You click on it, this little dialog uh, window pops up. You get twilight, sunrise, sunset, twilight uh, in the evening, moonrise transiting the moon, moon set. You get the next number of lunar phases, and you can easily click for throughout the month, forward by months and years and see uh, what the moon's going to be doing and what the different times for rising and setting all, all these things are. Uh, unlocked, it's $25, but I have used it since the mid-90s. I've just carried it through every um, program and computer I have. Uh, so you can click on the bottom and change to civil 
uh, twilight times, nautical twilight times, and astronomical twilight times. Civils where streetlights come on, you really can't see many stars. Nauticals where you can see the brighter navigational stars. Astronomicals where it's completely dark. There's no more sunlight up in the, uh, the sky above you, unless we're not getting some clouds. So that program is $25. I didn't see a way to currently pay for it. So if you send me a personal email to my Gmail address, I'll, I can share that uh, passcode with you. So if you have any suggestions, please contact me. This has been the Skies Over Colorado for September 2021. Keep looking up.